Greetings, and welcome to another OutSystems how-to video. My name is Andrew Duthie, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to work with JSON in an OutSystems app. In this video, you'll learn how to easily create complex structures in memory from your existing JSON data. You'll also learn how to serialize and deserialize JSON within your application. You might be aware that OutSystems makes it easy to work with JSON data coming from REST APIs or going to REST APIs. So if you go to consume a REST API or for that matter a SOAP web service and you point to a REST endpoint, OutSystems will automatically parse the JSON data coming back from that REST service and create structures in memory for you. The scenario that we're talking about here is more of how to deal with JSON when you're retrieving it from a database or some other source that's not actually from a REST API. Imagine a scenario where you've been asked to create an application based on JSON data that's stored in a relational database. The example that you see on screen is a simple table that contains customer information that's embedded in JSON structures within the relational database table itself. We're going to bring this into the OutSystems world and leverage it within an application. As a quick side note, I actually generated this application using JSONgenerator.com, which you can see the URL here. It's a nifty tool that makes it easy to create uh, complex structures of JSON data using some simple placeholders and repeats. All right, so now I'm in Service Studio, and I've created an application working with JSON to demonstrate the procedures we're going to work with here. I've opened the application, and to make life a little easier in terms of using the external data, I leverage Integration Studio to create an extension that would allow me to access my external database that's sitting inside of SQL Server. So I can access this by simply opening up my Dependencies window, typing in JSON, which I know is the name of my extension, JSON data, and selecting the customer data entity. Once I've added this, I can switch over to my data tab, and I can see my extension here. Once we have the extension, we can simply drag and drop it onto our flow and quickly scaffold out a screen with a basic table records widget to show the JSON information from that external table. To keep things fairly simple, I'm going to go ahead and make this accessible by anonymous users, and we'll go ahead and publish this and take a look at what the resulting table looks like. Go ahead and open that in the browser, and we can see here is our JSON information. So we can see it has information like name, which is its own structure with first and last, company email, tags, and we can see there's a list of accounts with the account type and the balance. So let's go ahead and grab one of these records and copy the text from that record. What we can do now is go into our data tab and under our structures area here I can right click and select add structure from JSON. And then I can just plug in the structure itself and give it a name. I'm going to call this customer, and I'll go ahead and add that structure. What you can see is we have the customer, which is the original structure that I created. It also has a name, which is a complex type, which is represented as its own structure, as is accounts, which is also represented as account item, which has the ID, the name, and the balance. So you can see if we drill down into these, we get the individual uh, parts of that JSON structure as complex structures within our application. Next we'll take a look at actually using the JSON data to bind into a table structure by deserializing that JSON data into our objects or structures. Back in our interface tab, I'll right click on the main flow and add a web screen. We'll just make this an empty screen and call it customer. Now I'm going to grab a table records widget and drag it into the main content area and we'll add a title customers. And now what we need to do is get our data and tie that into the table records widget. So I'm going to add a preparation to my screen 
And in my preparation, I want to return the data from the customer data table or entity. So I'm going to bring back that customer data. Now I need to get this into a format that it can be bound into my screen. So to do that, I actually need to have a local variable. And I'm going to call this local variable customer list. Notice that we've set the data type to a list of the customer structure, that in-memory structure that we created. And if I open this up, you can actually see it's the same shape as the structure of that data. Back in our preparation, now that we've got the list of the customer data coming back, we actually need to loop through that list. We're going to use a for each for that. And I'm going to start with the record list being the list that comes back from there. I'm going to start at zero, and I'm going to iterate through this for the length of that list. For each of the records in the list, I want to deserialize the record into an in-memory structure that matches the shape of the JSON. So I'm going to find the JSON string, which is coming out of my list, and then I want the data type to be customer. Now what I need to do is add this to that local variable, that list. And I'm going to do that by using the list append action, server action. So I'll connect that. The list that I want is my customer list. And the element is going to be the data that's coming out of the JSON deserialize customer object. Then I simply need to link back to my loop to complete the cycle. And I'm good to go. Now, going back to my screen, my table records needs to know what it's going to be based on. And the source records, of course, it's not going to be the customer list. It's going to be, or the it's not going to be the aggregate result. It's going to be the customer list, because that's what's going to have the shape of the data that I want. Now, if I come over back to my structure and expand this, I can decide what I want to see on screen, for example, I can choose the name, and you can see it can do either first or last here. And I do need to do a quick correction here. So I want this to be tied to the first and last name. And actually, I can just customize this so that I have the first and last name in the same column. And we'll just change that to name and we can delete this column entirely and we'll put the ID to the left so we've got our ID we've got our name and why don't we also add the company name okay so we've got three attributes coming out of our structure we're bound into this local customer list couple more quick things we want to do. Again, we're going to want to take the screen and make it available to anonymous users, again, just for the simplicity of the demo. And then I'm also going to grab this customer screen, drag it up onto my menu block so that I automatically get the navigation, and then we'll go ahead and publish and test. So we flip back to our browser. Reload our application. Now we'll see our customer screen. We should have a list of all the customers that are coming out of that table. And so we can see the name, the company name, and the ID. So now let's dig into details on these items. So in most scenarios, when we're working with detail information, we want to link that back from our table. So I'm going to select the expression that's showing our ID. I'm going to right click, link to, new web screen and we'll just call this customer detail in order for us to know which customer we're going to add an input parameter and i'm just going to call this customer id now because the data that i'm getting is just json data i'm just going to pass it as a text string now i'm also going to want a local variable and again, I want that to be this time of the customer type. And note that it defaults to the type of that customer structure. Then we'll add a preparation. 
so that we can retrieve the data. And again, we'll get the customer data. And we're going to, again, loop through that data. So we'll have our record list. We'll start at zero and we'll iterate through to the length of that set of records. But this time we're going to do something a little bit more complicated. So we're still going to deserialize. So our JSON string is going to come from the get customer data, customer info JSON, same as before. The data type is going to be customer. And this time what we want to do is determine whether or not the IDs match. So I'm going to test if the data coming out of here, the ID, is equal to the customer ID that's passed in. If so, then I want to go ahead and assign that record to my customer object. So I'm going to say the customer is then equal to the data that's coming out of my deserialization process. If that's not true, then we want to just loop back to the uh, cycle until the cycle is done. And then we also want the assign to, to loop back there so that at the end, we'll come out the end with a customer record assigned to our customer, assuming that we have one. Now, one thing that we missed along the way here is that our link actually does have to link to a customer ID. So we're just going to take that and select it from the table records there. Now, inside our customer detail, obviously we need some way to display our customer. So I'm just going to grab a form. I'm going to drag it onto the screen. I'm going to set its source record to our customer. And then, again, I can just come in and select entities or attributes rather that I want to drag and drop onto the screen. So I can take the first and last name, the company, and let's grab the email. Great. So far, so good. Now, one thing is that this is actually going to default to the customer form record ID as the variable. I actually want to point this to my customer variable. And you'll see why in just a second here. So I'm going to just quickly modify these to point to the variables. And there we go. So let's go ahead and publish this and take a look at how it looks in the browser. So now we're back in the browser. We can see that our IDs are now linked. And if I click on one of the links, we now actually see data from the individual person there. But what, if about, what about if I want to see the account information for this particular user? Well, that's pretty simple too. So let's take a look at that. Back in Service Studio, I'm still on my customer detail screen. Now to add the accounts, I can simply grab a table records widget, drop it onto the screen. I need to set it to a source record. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and get my customer and accounts, and we'll set that to the customer accounts. And then I can simply open up the account item structure and grab the attributes that I want to add to the table and display them in the table records widget. And go ahead and publish. Switch over to the browser. Go ahead and click back through again. And you can see, now we see the accounts that are associated with this user. We flip back over here again. We can see this user only has one account. All right, so far, so good. 
What if we want to serialize the data from the form back into a JSON object? Well, that's pretty straightforward as well. So to demonstrate this, I'm just going to drag a button onto my form, and I'll set the label to serialize, and its destination, I'm going to make a new screen action. So to serialize, pretty straightforward. Just like we have the JSON deserialize, we also have a JSON serialize action. So I can drag that into my action. I'm going to have it serialize the customer record. And that's why I bound my variables or my, my fields to the, the properties from this customer local variable. And then I'm just going to pop up a feedback message with that information. So I'm going to set the message text to your serialized customer plus JSON serialize one dot JSON. So we'll just display that JSON text and we'll make the message type an info message. Let's go ahead and publish. and take a look at the result. So if we go grab a customer, change the first name, click Serialize, we should see that the name change indeed did show up in our serialized content. So now if we wanted to save this back out or pass it into a, a web service, we'd be fine to do all of that. So in this video, you've seen how to easily take JSON data coming from, say, an external database and turn that into in-memory structures that make it really easy to bind those into your UI elements in your OutSystems application. You've seen also how to serialize and deserialize JSON data and use that to bind into UI elements. Before I go, I'd like to remind you, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can find many videos just like this one on our developer advocacy playlist. Thanks for watching and hope you'll come back soon.